This is Ronald Coleman inviting you to radio's most dramatic half hour, Favorite Story. ago, I visited an art exhibit in Beverly Hills, where all the paintings had been done by well-known Hollywood actors. Very skillful etchings by Lionel Barrymore, portraits by John Beale, even a watercolor, Autumn Leaves, painted by Margaret O'Brien. And one canvas that particularly caught my eye was a colorful painting of a circus carousel. And when I looked more closely for the artist's name, I saw Frank Sinatra. So it isn't difficult to understand why he chose, as his favorite story, this tale of a man who painted a merry-go-round. It's a somewhat obscure adventure by a little-known French playwright, Maurice Lavelle. The Man from Yesterday is the title, and here's Act One. Good man. Go on, that's a picture of the carousel. <laughs> Didn't you know that the carousel is like the heart of every child? Round and round it goes, and it's always singing a wonderful little song. You talk funny. <laughs> Do you know that's what she says, too? Who's she? The girl with the fire in her eyes. One look at her, my lad, and you're the prince of the Parthia, the king of the Nile Valley, Kubla Khan, and Jason with the golden fleece in his lap. Or, if you prefer, she'll sell you a ticket for a merry-go-round ride. Oh, you mean the lady with the frizzy hair who sells the ride? <laughs> you might call her that. Or one day, you might sneak up to the ticket booth and say, Eleanor Troy, one ride on the green horse. You're real funny. <laughs> Lad, you strike me as a gentleman with a discerning eye. Now, come here. I want you to have a look at this square of canvas. Now, you like it? I guess so. Ah, a very diplomatic answer. Uh, really, it's not good enough, this picture. You can get the colors and the way the wooden horses shape their manes like high-strung girls, but who can catch that melody on canvas? Who are you talking to? Oh, hello, Lorraine. I am having a serious discussion with this distinguished art critic. You get sillier every day. <laughs> Run along, kid. Oh, sure. Bye, mister. Goodbye. I'm off for an hour. Let's go for a walk. I'm stiff as a board. It's awful being clamped up in that two-by-four boot. I'll put up my thing. You still painting that? Uh-huh. You don't think anybody's going to buy it, do you? Oh, well, maybe. It's a silly picture. Why would anyone want to buy a painting of a carousel when they can come here and look at the real thing? For five centimes, they can even take a ride. Perhaps it's not worth anything. Why are you doing it, then? Oh, just a lock. Let's get out of this silly park and go look at the shop windows. There are wonderful things in the shop windows. Now, that depends on what you're looking for and what you want to see. Now, what does that mean? <laughs> I think we'd better walk. Tell me, Monsieur Renault, what are you going to buy your best girl for her birthday? Uh, oh, yes, it's tomorrow. Isn't you it? forgot. No, no, I, I, I just remembered. I still have to close a little, uh, shall we say, business deal. Oh, <gasps> look. What? Those wonderful earrings with rhinestones. Oh, aren't they precious? Oh, your ears are much too good for them. Lorraine, if you had a wish, what would you wish for? To be rich. I'd like to be very rich. I'd like to have those rhinestone earrings. And everything else I wanted. That's a good wish. It's all about you. What would yours be? Uh, my wish can only be whispered on the wind. You're a strange one. Tell me. You wouldn't understand. Well, I like that. You think I'm stupid, don't you? No, no, no. Lorraine, it's very simple. Uh, I wish for love. That and one other thing. What other thing? I want to capture a melody on canvas. A melody? Yes, so that when people look at a picture of mine, they... 
They'll hear a little song. Uh, now you must think I'm a strange one. You're crazy clean through. I beg your pardon. I should like to buy a set of earrings. Those in the window with the rhinestones. How much are they? Oh, but monsieur, those are not rhinestones. They're diamonds. A beautiful set. Uh, Here, I'll show them to you. There. Exquisite, perfectly matched. Uh, how much are they? A bargain, only fourteen hundred francs. Well, it's I... not so much when one is in love, eh, Monsieur. <laughs> I promise you the lady will be in trouble. Uh, let me wrap them for you. Uh, may I give you a check? Of course, if you have identification. Oh, thank you. Uh, then I'll take the diamond earrings. But uh, will you hold my check just for the space of one hour? Uh, but uh, why, monsieur? Well, I, I merely have a certain business matter to settle. I, I assure you the check is good. Really, I know you are out of your mind. But I've been working on this for weeks, months. With your left hand, perhaps? I was sure that you would give me at least 1,400 francs for it. 1,400? Do you think I'm made of money? Paris is full of painters. You can buy a whole studio full of paintings for 1,400 francs. And look at this one. A carousel. Really, it's just a pot boiler. If I gave you 10 francs for it, I'd be losing money. I could never sell it in a million years. But how is the painter supposed to live? The economics of existence is not my problem. I buy and sell works of art. And what do you consider a work of art, monsieur? Get me something by somebody with a name. That's the kind of merchandise on which I can make a profit. A Degas, Picasso. Who has heard of Arnaud? How much can you give me? Well, I, I feel sorry for you, Arnaud. The colors are not bad in your picture. It's a stout piece of canvas. Perhaps the back can be used again. I'll give you 20 francs. 20 francs. All right, 20 francs. <laughs> I'll show it to you in just a moment. I can't wait. Where is it? Lorraine, just one question before I give you your present. If I had to go away, far away, would you come with me? What are you talking about? Where are you going? If I had to go out of the country and I, I was able to send for you, would you come? Like where? Uh, Switzerland, maybe. Uh-huh. Who wouldn't like to go to Switzerland? All those martins and everything. Now let me see my present. <laughs> Here's your present, Larry. Many happy returns to this day. My dearest Lorraine, I am in the city of Bern in Switzerland. I cannot tell you why I've left France, but it was necessary that I be out of the country. I long for you, and I want you here. For the past week, I've been working as a common laborer with a pick and shovel in the earth so that I could send you the money to come here and be with me. To be, if you like, my bride. Enclosed as a money draft for your train fare. Come soon, my dearest. I'm waiting. that word. Pierre Renault, exile. Oh, nobody but an exile knows of the sweetness of home. The way the rain touches the streets on spring nights. 
the way the lamplights along the avenues wink at you. The way the sunlight whispers good morning through your window pane. Home. How like a lost child a man can feel. How little courage a man has when he's alone. Entry. I am still alone. Fifteen years of being alone. And today I found an old Paris magazine. At first I glanced at it with but numb interest. And then I saw a story about the disappearance of the distinguished artist Pierre Renault. It was a long article. It told how Monsieur Renault, the celebrated painter, had disappeared. Every day somebody disappears. A dishonest cashier, a forger. But do people take any interest in them? No. But my loss caused regret. The public was perhaps beginning to recognize my talent. Perhaps value it. I was not an unknown. I was somebody. I had a name. Entry. I am penniless. I must do something to earn a living. But what? Painting? And give them a chance to recognize my style and so lead to my arrest? How could I risk it? But I must do something to get enough money to support life. And then, someday perhaps I can go back to Paris. Someday. Entry. I cannot begin to list the jobs I've done. The humblest jobs, those that demand nothing but physical strength. Why does not this unhappy man kill himself? Why does he live? Why? Why? Because in the back of his mind he still dreams. He dreams of a park where the green branches clutch at the sky. Of a girl with fire in her eyes. Of a carousel that sang a little song. He dreams, and his heart stays young. I know. You are going back to Paris no matter what happens. You're going home. For Act Two of Frank Sinatra's favorite story, The Man from Yesterday. Oh, London is a man's town, there's power in the air. But Paris is a woman's town with flowers in her hair. The Place de l'Etoile wrapped in dust. The Champs Elysees. The Tuileries. The Quai d'Orsay. The Pont Neuf. Yes, a beautiful city. And we can understand the longing for home in the heart of the painter Pierre Renault. Here's Act Two of The Man from Yesterday. Entry. I write this as I sit on the train. Soon I will see Paris. Paris. The most beautiful woman in the world. It's been 15 years since I last saw this wonderful city. Who is there that would remember me? And who will recognize me with my white hair, my beard, my bent shoulders? And what shall I see first? The boulevard? The little studio where I once dreamed such great dreams? Shall I find Lorette? Lorraine. I shall go first to the little park, the little green park. Perhaps the carousel is still there. Perhaps... Home. 
terrace. Now, it was just around this turn where the leaves become very thick. Yes. It's still there. It's still there. Hello. Hello, little carousel. Da, 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 da. Want something, mister? Want a ticket? Uh, uh, forgive me. I, uh, what is your name? I don't give out my name to total strangers. You're not... <laughs> no, she wouldn't be as young as you. I don't know what you're talking about. Do you perhaps know a girl who once worked here... Her name was Lorraine Perrier. Oh, of course I know her. You do? Oh, everybody's heard about her. Heard about her? How? Well, whenever anybody comes to work here, the commissioner of parks tells about her. She's famous. What happened to her? Well, she's very rich. <laughs> rich. So she got her wish. What did you say? Oh, I, I was just talking to myself. Oh, you're a strange one, aren't you? That's what she used to say. I wish I knew what you were talking about. Look, you'd better get along now. The Jardin Le Parc is my beau, and, well, he doesn't like anybody standing around his booth. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, just one more question, please. How did she become rich? Oh, someone she met once turned out to be famous, and she wrote his life story. I don't think she really wrote it herself, though. Some newspaper man helped her. She married him later. Sure wish I had her money. You know, I could do the same thing, just make up a lot of stories about an old sweetheart. No, but then nobody famous ever comes around this dump. Dump? Oh. oh, my dear girl, you're so wrong. Just listen to the wonderful carousel. Listen to the melody. Melody? What are you talking about? Listen. Da 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 da. Why, it's the same melody after all this time. You know, there are some things that never change. Yeah, there is sort of a melody. You know something funny? I've been working here for two years. This is the first time I've noticed it. Entry in the journal of Pierre Renault. Citizen of Paris. I must change my name if I'm to paint again. And I am painting. I've bought canvas, some colors, and brushes. And I've begun to work in a little attic overlooking the city. I paint feverishly, hesitating occasionally like a convalescent who fears movement after long illness. Is it good? I think it is good. I'm painting the view from my window. I'm painting Paris. And through my fingers into the brush, I'm trying to pour my love for the city. But... Do I still have any talent? I've lost my ability to criticize. I don't know if it's good or bad. But it's necessary to live. So I shall take this to an art dealer. And perhaps he will buy it. But I must sign a name. What name? Any name. Blairier? Yes. Yeah. A painting by Augustine Blairier. Newly born. I beg your pardon, monsieur. Yes. I, I am a painter. I have no money. I wondered if you would buy a picture. By whom? By by me. What's your name? Name? Uh, Blerier. Augustine Blerier. I'm sorry. We're not buying anything just at present. Please, I... Uh... Certainly you're wise enough to know that a dealer in my position cannot deal in unknown quantities. Please, will you at least look at it? I'm a busy man. You Mr. don't have to buy it. I'm not asking you to buy it. I just want you to tell me if it's good. Oh. Very well. There. There. Tell me. What do you think? It's not bad. Not at all bad. In fact, remarkably good. Did you say this was your work? Yes. Yeah. Astonishing. Amazing. You know of what this reminds me? It's like a Renault. What did you say? Yes, that your work resembles that of the great Renault. Great. You must know of him, monsieur. 
Since his strange disappearance and death, Pierre Renault has been recognized as the great painter of our age. You're trembling, Matt. Oh. Did you know him, perchance? Yes. Oh. I, too, was honored by contact with the great Renault. Oh, yes, I once purchased a picture of his. It now hangs in the Louvre. The Louvre? Yes. You know, I sold it to them for a hundred thousand francs. hundred thousand? Do you want me to tell you something? You, you have run no style. It's quality. Oh, but this painting is better than anything he ever no, did. Yes. No, no. So as a dealer, of course, I should not tell no, you. No, it's not better. I think that it is. Very few of Renault's paintings have the emotion that this one has. The proof of my opinion is that I'm prepared not only to take this picture of yours, but as many more as you can paint. I will sell them for you, monsieur. In two months, your work will be known. In two years, you'll be so celebrated, they'll forget Renault. Oh, my friend. What's your name? Blarier? Uh, yes, Well, Blarier. monsieur Blarier, you can make the world forget Renault. We can make a tidy profit as we do it. Forget Rano. Uh, now let us come to terms. Because you understand, I can't offer you much for your first picture. It's some time before people understand the difference between Blarier and Rano. Uh, most buyers need guidance. But it will end with Rano going to the wall. Excuse me. I'll come back some other time. All right, I'll leave the picture. No. Uh, you're making a great mistake, monsieur. <laughs> a man doesn't hesitate when an opportunity like this presents itself. Why, if I had offered Renault what I'm offering you, more than likely he'd be here now. Yes, that's true. Why, you can't possibly refuse my offer. It would be childish. I do refuse it. Give me my picture. Oh, but I... Give me my picture! It's a great pity, monsieur. Believe me, I can make a bigger name for you than Renault made. Goodbye, sir. But, monsieur, then... <laughs> Entry. As I stood in that shop, I suddenly realized that all I cared for, all I respected in myself was the man from yesterday. The man I had once been and could no longer be. What did the success or the failure of Blerier mean to me? I am not Blerier. Blerier is a stranger who's being invited to come forward as a rival to me, to my real self. This unknown could efface my name and what it stands for in the art world. I left the shop. It was growing dark. Some people who were hurrying along stumbled up against me. It was a damp, dreary evening. I stood on the curbstone, my picture in my hand. I held it for a second at arm's length. Then I threw it in the road in front of a passing carriage. And the hoof of the horse struck the frame. Then came the wheel, and it split the canvas and crushed it in the mud so that little remained of it but a gray mass like crumpled paper. Excuse me, guide. Could you tell me, please, where I could find the painting by Pierre Renault? It's been many years since I've visited the Louvre. Oh, monsieur, we have many Renaults here. Many? Uh, there's a special exhibit of his work in the main gallery. Uh, would you care to have this guidebook? It explains just exactly what Pierre Renault had in mind as he painted each picture. It does? Well, uh, that's remarkable. Uh, yes, I'll, I'll, I'll have one. Yes, sir. Uh, ten something, please. Yes. There you are. Uh, be sure to see Renault's carousel, monsieur. That's our prize. The carousel. Where did they find all these pictures? Oh. Hello, little carousel. And what do you suppose the guidebook has to say about you? Number 364. Pierre Reno's masterpiece. The carousel. Visitors say that as they look at this picture, they hear the little mouth. They hear the little melody of the real carousel. Well, who knows? 
Perhaps that's the test of a good picture. To hear a melody or a voice when you look at it. To be so moved that you yourself supply the magic accompaniment. And for this half hour, I almost felt as if I were back in Paris again. Our thanks to William Conrad for his portrayal of the man from yesterday. To Claude Sweeten for his score. And to Lawrence and Lee who wrote the script. And our thanks to Frank Sinatra, who chose this tale as his favorite story. Next week's favorite story was selected by the famous picture director, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Now, C.B. put me on the spot, for he named A Tale of Two Cities, the great novel by Charles Dickens. And if you think your host on Favorite Story is going to let anybody else play Sidney Carton, you're sadly mistaken. So, I'll be sitting in a courtroom of the Old Bailey next week about this time, with a barrister's wig tilted on my head. We hope you'll be listening. (laughs) 